I'm not sure I've read a book of more dislikable characters. Hey, what's going on, mere mortalites? This is Kyron coming at you with another book review. The book reviews for those who want to transcend beyond their own mere mortality. Today, I have another Aussie classic for you. It is My Brilliant Career by Miles Franklin. The book was published in 1901 and it's approximately 400 pages. It's set in rural Australia in the 1890s, and in particular, it's in Goulburn, which is about two hours south of Sydney, southwestish of Sydney. Although in this time, anywhere in Australia, to be honest, is really rural, apart from deep into the center of the cities. It tells the tale of, I believe it's pronounced Sybilla Melvin, and in particular, from the age of 16 to 21, in her family home life and her aspirations for the future. So we start off with learning about what it's like living in possible some gullies and this is where her parents who are peasant dairy farmers essentially and her multiple multiple siblings all reside in this one home and her father's an alcoholic her mother's overbearing and she has aspirations for the future and essentially is a, a, a wild child she wants to be free she wants more in life than what is given to her at the moment she gets a very fortunate break and her rich grandparents in particular rich grandma takes her in and she goes to another place called Katajat. And she lives a, an idyllic life here, has lots of fun. She's going to dances and horse races and is mingling with, I suppose, the cream of the crop of, of the Australian life back then, Australian people. And she has this fulfillment of, of her ambitions. Oh, I'm going to be a potentially actress or writer or something to do. She wants to be independent. There's a, a love interest thrown into this story as well. So she meets Mr. Harold Beecham, who's a 25-year-old, very young, wealthy man who has multiple properties and is a, a cattle owner. You know, he looks after bullocks and all these sorts of things. And then that's when the sort of degradation happens. She is recalled back to her family life. She has to go be a governess for a filthy peasant family who she hates and has, you know, disgusting, ignorant children, all these things. And eventually she ends up back at her own home and almost resenting her, her life. She has an opportunity to go back with her to be the wife of this Mr. Harold Beecham. And she makes a decision at the end as to whether she will or won't go with him. A note on the author and in particular this book, you will find online that this is regarded as one of the Aussie classic books. So she had a huge impact on Australian literature. There's so many awards named after her and she was pretty prolific, although there was a big gap between her first two books and then her subsequent other ones where uh, this was in the periods of sort of 1910 to 1930. So lots of things happening in the world around that time. So can be explained by that. But very interesting to note that this book in particular, which is probably her most well-known and famous, was published when she was 21. So very, very young age. And I guess it explains the style of the book because it is of a young girl in that age so she was you know writing it as she sort of saw it living her own life and then almost repeating it uh, verbatim onto the page so it does explain why this book is so influential and why it does very much seem like a young girl well it's because a young girl wrote it onto the main themes of the book and one that just jumps out right away is ambition the desire for distinction that is the rough definition of the word and it really got me thinking what is her desire what is actually that she wants out of life because there is a constant chirping in the book about her ambition she wants to be more than what she is, how essentially everyone is beneath her, her family at Possum Gully and the circumstances there are beneath her, the MSWAT family and their ignorance and their poverty are beneath her. And even when she is mingling with the rich and wealthy folk, she is still saying, oh, they're so conceited, I'm still above them, things like this. So it really got me thinking, but what actually is it that she desires and it's not clear at all she doesn't say that she wants fame she doesn't say that she wants wealth or independence or that distinction what actually is it she really doesn't nail it down and so this ambition she has I'm really not sure is the right word because if you have ambition but without clarity without purpose without hard work without planning behind it I feel that gets into the more area of entitlement and damn, she is an entitled little brat. If you can read this book without feeling that, I would say you've read a different book than me because it's almost like she has this right for distinction. Oh, I don't need to do anything even though I'm lazy, even though there's no effort of putting in hard work, of trying to improve myself, of 
picking a certain area to go down to get this ambition to fulfill this ambition none of that is there and so you just come away thinking man this is she's not ambitious she's entitled she wants all of these things but without putting the effort into getting it now even if i'm a bit lenient and say okay she does have ambition it's not entitlement i feel there's sort of two types that can come with this there's the ugly and then there's the beneficial and boy, does she fall into the ugly camp. She is always talking about her external appearance. Oh, I'm so plain. I'm so, nobody wants to look at me, these sort of things. But I would also say, well, that's countered by your inner appearance as well, because her inequalities are not super great. She's ugly inside and out. Let's just list a couple here. She's mean, frivolous, haughty, uncaring, and super lazy. Very victim status sinking, woe is me, everything that happens is something bad happening to me and none of it's my fault and responsibility. She does make one good decision, I would say redeeming decision right at the end. And even then, I'm not sure if she made that because she actually cares about what is good for Mr. Harold Beecham or more it's for her own self-dignity, I would say over inflated sense of self-dignity and made it for her own decisions rather than because it was the correct thing to do for him. The other type of ambition, the more beneficial one, I would say is the one that can actually improve the world in certain ways. So this is maybe the person who wants to be the greatest sports star or the greatest actor who or who wants to rise from their position as a you know lowly child in poverty to become something. And this is the type that I would say is probably more beneficial for the world but you also need those good redeeming qualities to harness this to harness that energy i would say ambition is just an energy and you need the backings of things in your own personality characteristics and you know even plans systems and put in place to harness that energy to make you fulfill that ambition i would say and and bring positivity to the world whereas with her i would say yeah you know, is the world a better off place with her being in it? I'm really not so sure because from this reading the book, I would say uh, that's debatable. The other main thing that jumps out at me is adversity, enduring the tragedy of the times. And look, even though I had some negative qualities of her right then, I would say there are a lot of things that were outside of her control that were unduly infecting her in many ways. She was not able to be independent. This was in the time where women were very much you know, seen as side pieces to men and where marriage was a super important thing because if you don't get married, how else are you going to live? What are you going to do in the world? There was the poverty, indigence, that sucking the lifeblood out of you, not getting the chance to try and move forward and progress because every single day you are absolutely worn to the bone just making a meager living to, to get by. The ugliness factor, her beauty, you know what? People who are more beautiful do actually have easier things in life. They have more opportunities, I would say at least, to do what they want. There can be some downsides to it as well, but on the whole, you probably want to be more beautiful than less beautiful. So there are a certain amount of topics that were related to her and you could say, yeah, you know what? She got a bit, bit of a shit go out of it because all of these things are happening to her and she has no control over them and they are really affecting her life. The problem for her is that adversity affects all of us. There's not really anyone who can go through this whole life and not have anything bad happen to them or their loved ones. No one who gets a full rosy go of it, everything is great for them. So if you look at it, I would say that adversity then is the endurance of the tragedy of the times and a test of character and brains. And Let's look at her, for example. Well, her character is certainly flawed and there's many things wrong with it. Maybe she can't introspect enough to realize, hey, I need to change this to be able to fulfill my ambition, for example. So you go, okay, whatever. But she certainly has brains. And if you can't say that your brains are being there to realize, oh, pragmatically, maybe I need to make some decisions on what I should do. Maybe I do need to plan this way. Maybe I do need to change the way I interact with other people to get what I want from them, things like that. So I really feel it's all in the intent and her intent is really not there behind it. So maybe you could say she's a feminist and that's all good. And, you know, she wants independence, those fantastic things more, let's bring it on. But when it gets to the man hating aspect, when it gets to the aspect of all men are trash and stupid and ugly, brutish creatures, which he certainly goes through in the book, that's when it goes, okay, you know what? How much of this is is really on you? When it gets to that point, it's like, okay, well, where is your free will? Are you willing to make any concessions to 
get what it is that you want out of life. So really when I look at her and the adversity she goes through, I just think fundamentally she's to be pitied. You know, she has a rough go at it and then also she hasn't the awareness to realize she can make it better through her own actions and instead just wants to wallow in her self-pity and all these sort of things. Now onto my personal observations and takeaways. And when I look at the characters in the book as a whole, I go, damn, there's not really anyone in here who seems like a great person at all. Sure, they have some characteristics that are okay, but if I think of the main things that I took out from the book and for each of the characters, for her, obviously, I think, you know, lazy, self-conceited, haughty, thinks herself better than others. Her father, alcoholic, mean, just drunk, not being of any use to anyone. Her mother, very mean-spirited, overbearing, also thinks she deserves better in life than what she has. Her grandma is very stuck in these old ways of of doing things and Mr. Harold Beecham, you know, full of confidence, conceded even to a way and doesn't realize that he's so shit with money that he loses everything. All of these characters, apart from maybe Aunt Helen, I do just say, man, like seems to draw a like. She's a kind of shitty person and, well, she draws shitty people around her. That's not to say that these characters are bad at all. It's just when I look at them, the quality that jumps out at me is not usually a great one. It's usually a negative one, something a bit iffy. However, they can be transfixing in doses. So her personality, for example, I would say is probably something close to bipolar. She has these extreme highs of energy, fun, flirtiness, being everywhere and just being the life of the party. And then next thing you know, she's being dirty, mean, saying things to intentionally hurt someone. And then next minute, you know, she's realized, oh, maybe that was too mean. I'll go back and make up for it, that sort of thing. So I can see that the personality qualities she has whilst on a long run, probably a negative one. So not someone that you would want in your life like that, unless you really enjoy that and have found ways to, you know, be with someone who can be constantly approval sinking or someone who is negative in so many ways, victim seeking, that sort of stuff. But you can have fun with them in in tiny doses. For Sibylla in particular, I just think she has some qualities that really don't mix. So ambitious, hey, that could be good. But unreflective, when you combine those two, man, that's probably not a good thing. She's also very passionate. Hey, that's really good as well, but she's uncaring. So she can be super passionate, but cruel at the same time. We've reached the summary and I would say this is a feminist text from a different time, a different era. It's a capsule into the past. Now, I've spent a lot of the time talking about all the negative things that I found from this book and particularly her qualities and the qualities of the people in it. But I did actually enjoy reading the book. So I did find the characters very lifelike. I did enjoy the description of the Australian scenery of the bush and what it was like to live out there. And I did enjoy that perspective of that mental thinking that what it was like to be in the past, you know, 120 plus years ago in rural Australia. So with all that being said, even though I didn't particularly like her or her character or her story, I did find overall to be something useful, something interesting. And so I need to have a bit of appreciation for that. So all in all, I'm giving the book My Brilliant Career by Miles Franklin a six and a half out of 10. Okay story, just shit people inside of it. As it's an Aussie book, we'll do some Aussie slang. And there was only two pieces that I really found in this book. Number one is squatter. And that refers to a person, it's a colonial word in particular, of a person who will find a piece of land that's not claimed by anyone else and it's not granted to them. So they just take it and eventually the crown will realize, oh, okay, we can't really kick this person off the land. They're so well established there. We'll just give them the land. So a squatter is a person who almost takes something unrighteously, just doing it by pure happenstance and then is rewarded for it later, I guess. The other one is Jackaroo and this refers to, or you could even be Jillaroo nowadays and refers to a young boy or a young lad or Jillaroo, a young girl or young lass who is a trainee on a sheep station. So they will be looking after the cattle or the sheep or whatever it is and help muster them, help move them around, help out with small jobs. And it's just referring to the trainee aspect and that they're young. And scene. So that is it for My Brilliant Career by Miles Franklin. If you've read the book, I would love to know what did you think of it? I was actually coming in expecting something more along the lines of 
going into the city and becoming a star. And I thought that up until a midway point and then at the end of the book realized, oh, wow, no, completely different from what I was expecting. So I'd love to know your opinions on that. Do you think she was entitled or was she more ambitious? I would love to know all of these things. If you can do all the nice things on this video, a like, a subscription, hitting the bell notification helps me, helps the channel and gets you more access to more book reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it for today, my mere mortalites. Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Current out.